Hi, I'm Luke Stock. I'm a senior director at Sigma. And I'm Luke Stanky, the product evangelist at Sigma. I think today we wanted to talk about uh, Microsoft Fabric One Lake and specifically uh, some of the things that Microsoft says about what really makes their platform something special, right? Yeah, we want to get into it and understand those pillars and how those pillars align to what Microsoft attempts to do versus what Sigma actually does. Yeah. And when I think about those pillars, there's really three of them. The messaging is they unify data, they protect data, and they empower everyone. Now, that's the message. Let's actually take a closer look at how these compare, and let's put them up against what Sigma has to offer. So we're just going to put Microsoft and Sigma. Everything starts with a, a data warehouse, namely a cloud data warehouse. So let's just start with that cloud data warehouse. And we're talking. You know, Snowflake, maybe Databricks, BigQuery, Redshift, those are kind of the, the main ones. And with Microsoft and their analytics suite, specifically Power BI, the, the place that you would start is um, an end user sitting down here on their laptop or computer. And uh, so they have, a, they have a desktop client that they install called Power BI Desktop. And they're going to connect to that cloud data warehouse and import that data into these uh, little files here and sit on the computer. It's actually SSAS tabular, if you're being technical, um, proprietary data engine that uh, Microsoft uh, created many years ago. So first, they're going to suck the data out of the cloud warehouse into like tiny files, um, typically aggregates of what's actually in the warehouse. Um, and then from there, you know, they're going to publish it up to some sort of like cloud service, right? So for them, this is like the analytics service. We'll call it the Power BI service. So they create the content with the data. They publish it up to the Power BI service in the cloud. And that data, along with the dashboards that they authored, it all moves up into the cloud. All these little data snippets, probably hundreds if not hundreds of thousands eventually for large enterprises sitting up here in the Power BI service. And from there, what they'll need to do is uh, schedule those uh, SSAS tabular files to refresh using import mode from the Cloud Data Warehouse. Daily, weekly, right? Yeah, it's also really interesting, this model, if we, they talk about unifying data, but what we're seeing in this infrastructure is that we're seeing data that lives in the CDW also have to be brought into Power BI service or live directly on a laptop or on some sort of machine. And when I think about what's happening here, at least the way that you've described it, is that you've got to pay for your CDW, but then you have to pay to just take that data and import it into Power BI service. So in my mind, what I'm seeing here, and you can clarify this, it looks to me as if you're paying twice for this. Absolutely. I mean, wherever the data sits, that's where you're going to pay for compute. So you pay your cloud data warehouse to copy the data out, uh, and then you're going to pay for a compute on the Power BI service as well, because that's where the data is going to be. And I mean, Imagine if the data gets too large for it to scale in these kind of tiny files, because you know, it can only scale to a handful of millions, maybe 10 million records. But if you get into hundreds of millions or billions of records, what I'm finding Microsoft would suggest is uh, to now invest in Fabric. So you can back your Power BI reports and dashboards with Fabric, but then you're just importing the data out of the cloud warehouse again into supposedly a more scalable solution aside from you know these SSAS tabular files sitting in the service. So we've got data in the CDW, data in Fabric, data in Power BI service, data on the desktop. We've got 
data everywhere. It yeah. seems yeah. counterintuitive to the message around protecting data, uh, or at least keeping it unified. That's right. I also think, too, you know, if you copy the data out, the data security that was built, um, you know, probably in the CDW itself natively here, that's gone. You'd have to rebuild the security again up in Fabric or some other layer of the Microsoft tier. The other thing that I think about with the Fabric and Microsoft is that they really, back to the desktop user, is that they really say, great, build these things in Power BI, but also leverage the power of that data inside of Excel. And so for me, while we're worrying about security here, I actually look at the desktop user and see this as a giant vulnerability because you're empowering users to use a spreadsheet, but that can't scale to that, to that location, and it certainly can't keep, this, keep it secure because it's living in Excel. Yeah. I mean, it, it's honestly kind of a mess once you really break it down. But I mean, kind of going back to you know, the key messaging, like what, where do we land on that? All right, so let, to just summarize, and we'll go through the Microsoft messaging and sort of assess it really quick. Yep. We talk about data unification. It's certainly based on how this is architected, does not actually unify data. When we talk about protecting data and bringing it, whether it's into Excel or what we're doing with Fabric, or we have all of these different different uh, extracts that are occurring, it certainly doesn't feel like data is protected. It's certainly being exposed in many different areas. And then when it, we talk about empowering everybody, we've got the desktop users that could use spreadsheets, but they ultimately have to use something like um, Power BI. And in Power BI, those users have to use, they have to know the proprietary languages of M or DAX to really go further than what someone would expect. So when I think about empowering everyone, for me, this is a big piece of the Power BI and, and Fabric language is it's not actually empowering everybody uh, to use the data in a way that still keeps it secure, safe, and governed. Yeah, 100% agree. It's uh, quite a mess. So let's uh, maybe we could take a step back in this architecture and think about what is Sigma look like in terms of how it unifies data, it protects it, and empowers everyone. Yeah. So I mean, the first thing that's obvious is there's no desktop client installs. Uh, Sigma is actually a true SaaS platform, um, unlike Power BI. So let's just get rid of that down here because there's no, no installs on laptops. Mm. Data is never going to sit on a laptop um, or persist there. So we don't need any of that. No extracts. No security threats on a machine itself. No, none of that. In fact, like a Sigma user that's either, you know, creating content or um, consuming content is just going to come through like a modern browser on their laptop uh, and hit the Sigma service. So get rid of that in a live query fashion. So there's no import for there. Get rid of that. I also notice you are getting rid of the extracts. So Sigma, there's no extractive data that it lives on in the platform itself? No, none. Uh, it's because it's always a live query model back to the CDW. Uh, so there is no extract sitting in the Sigma service itself. And then, of course, we're never going to come out with our own sort of data fabric, one lake product, because we're, we're built for analytics. We're, the type of user that's going to use a spreadsheet. So this goes completely away. There's no um, need to evaluate some other sort of data lake strategy. All right. And then I guess the only other thing to call out that makes Sigma very unique compared to like a Power BI is our spreadsheet-like interface. Yeah, we have the, the spreadsheet-like interface. And I'm, I also think about, you talk about this live query. We still have dollar signs up here. And the thing that I think about is, if I'm using live query, am I going to increase my cost consumption as a result of that? What does Sigma do to bring that down? Yeah, it'll probably stay flat or go down um, depending on your deployment compared to like a Power BI because we have a bunch of uh, caching layers that we intelligently use, both in like a, a Snowflake, for example. So 
oftentimes you'll see a warehouse cache. In the sake of Snowflake, there's also an API caching layer, a public API that Snowflake exposes, so we track every query that's sent. We also have a cache in the browser over here, and we also have something called Alpha Query, which is a patented technology that uh, helps uh, use browser cache to expose the data and some of the gestures that users do. So then if we were to now compare that to the Microsoft message and we're just going to evaluate ourselves a little bit, we talk about unifying data, it to me seems like nothing leaves the data warehouse so it stays unified. Full it doesn't have to worry about unifying it, it's already there. Yeah, in fact we can leverage the role-based access controls that might have been built in a Snowflake or um, name your, your cloud data warehouse. And the, I guess there is one piece to think about with unifying data, which is the fact that uh, with Microsoft, you've got the spreadsheet of which you're adding the context to of your business. Sigma offers something very similar in its UI with the ability to write back data to the data warehouse in a way that unifies it like none other. Before with Microsoft, you're pulling that information out and you're putting it in a spreadsheet. It's again, it's isolated and it's in a silo. With Sigma, you enter that data in and that data is going all the way back directly into the data warehouse as well. And yeah, and in fact, it's gonna store in a separate writable schema that was built for Sigma and designated to Sigma. So we're not writing over the data that's in the warehouse. We're writing data side by side to the data that's coming into your warehouse. That's awesome. So if I'm looking at all of this and thinking it through, data lives entirely in the warehouse, so you're protecting it just right in the CDW, one place. one place. So when I think about the message of protecting data, that seems like Sigma is right on that message that Microsoft is trying to send. Yeah, it's true single version of the truth. Uh, and then if we sort of assess on the empower everyone. Mm. With Microsoft, we talked about the need for M and DAX. With Sigma, we have spreadsheet interface. Yeah, there's no proprietary language. In fact, everything that you would do in the Sigma interface, machine generates native SQL, SQL for the CDW in question. So it's not like generic SQL, it's actually SQL for Snowflake or SQL for Databricks. So you get the optimal performance and in, in, uh, query run times on the warehouse. So empowers everyone. So if we just go back to this message now, unifying data, protecting that data in a governed space, and empowering an entire organization to use that data. Microsoft doesn't actually hit on any of its no. message, while Sigma is spot on in thinking about it in depth and actually delivering exactly that. That's absolutely right. Yeah, we're we are a data company, and if you chose your strategy to be Snowflake or Databricks, whatever have you, you know we're going to sit there, we're going to scale with you, and we're going to give your end users a, a really genuine experience that they're going to love. Oh, Luke, um, this has been a, a great overview. I've learned quite a bit. Uh, thank you for coming in and giving the lesson today. I loved it, Luke. It's great spending time with you. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.